And so you're good to go. Hey, um, we're gonna call the finance committee meeting of July 6, 2021 to order at 2 p.m. Pursuant to Governor Baker's uh, March, well, actually, uh, this has now changed. So I'm reading the wrong thing, but um, <laughs> pursuant to the statute that was recently passed allowing remote meetings, um, this meeting is being held remotely. Uh, and uh, the agenda is limited. Um, we do have public comment if there are public comment if public wishes to comment later um, but this is all about ARPA funds with two parts one is uh, to propose a process to the council to allocate ARPA funds and include within that discussion of the use of ARPA funds for town government needs and um, with that I want to go through the usual process of just making every sure that all members of the committee can hear and be heard um, so, uh, Kathy? Yes, I can. Uh, Bob? Yes. Bernie? Yes. And Dorothy? Yes. Uh, let's see, uh, Pat? Yes. And uh, Lynn? Yes. I think I've got everyone. So, uh, we can proceed. There were two documents that we sent to you. And uh, since then, uh, one was, uh, and I think they were both, one's in the packet now and the other should go into the packet, but it's uh, um, just a draft of the report that is, uh, will become finance committee report to uh, the council regarding the, um, subject that we're talking about. It is solely on the last meeting in this meeting about our profounds. And um, so um, the other is about the proposed outline. And I was wondering if it would might be better to start with the outline, but I'm welcome to comments or suggestions otherwise. But if not, um, let's start with the outline. And uh, Sean, you want to put it up or um so it's in word too so if we want to if there's any revisions to it as we go i can make them on the screen do you, do you have it on the screen andy yes okay so everybody has it so mm -hmm. uh, are there any general comments about the uh proposed process um, and does it seem consistent with what we discussed last time? And I have some thoughts on that subject, but I'm gonna want to go first. Kathy? Uh, yeah, I had a question. I, I, I generally like this. So on uh, number four, the creation of an ARPA action plan. Um, this is uh, side by side with what's in the report. Um, and a question of Bob, who came up with this wonderful idea. Um, does the town manager need to have a team to do the ARPA action plan? So is a step in that, um, you know, summer process, uh, you know, uh, assemble the team? And if yes, I would like Bob to be on it, but you know, that's just an aside. So does, you know, it doesn't have any mention of that. In the report later, we talk about an advisory group having multiple people, but we don't, on the action plan, we don't talk about a team. And I think it should have one. Um, and I didn't have specific ideas for that. So, um, so that was my general on one through four. That was my only comment on one through four. It's a common question. Yeah. Bob, do you have any thoughts on that? Or you don't have to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, I I I agree. I think that um I think the town manager should be there should be some I don't want to call it an advisory group, but but a more than one, more than just the town manager sitting down with his staff to kind of make sure that all of the impacts are at least you know generally uh identified uh, in the action plan because you don't want to 
not mention something in the action plan and then say, oh, by the way, in January or whatever, uh, you say, oh, by the way, we, we forgot to put this in. I mean, you can always go back and amend the action plan. It's not like the end of the world, but it's sort of better to try to get as comprehensive a list of impacts at, at the start. And, you know, and, and my question, would this be, you know, you know, billet one be assemble a team of town staff and at least, you know, two others, three others, something like that, um, that would be, you know, broadly representative one, you know, so how without, I don't want to get too directive, but it, it was just my thought of, you know, one more person, two more people, you know, I don't want to think it should be an unwieldy group either. I mean, one, one option would be to have the town manager consult with um, other staff in town that would be able to identify needs or unmet needs and, you know, impacts on unmet needs, something like that. That way you're not kind of being prescriptive and but you're sort of saying it should be more than just town manager and a couple of people. Um, okay, let's see what others say, Dorothy. Well, I'm most interested in that phrase unmet needs and trying to find out what they are and obviously that needs finance people and people very deep into the budgets of departments um, who have found that they needed money for something, but whatever the, our budget or the other money that came in, it doesn't qualify for it or you can't use it for that. Um, and then of course you'd have to find out whether this new money could be used for that. Um, I mean, and, and the example I come up with is one that we probably can't even do um, because um, we don't do school budget, right? Yeah, I mean, that's sort of a separate process entirely because that's within the school realm mm -hmm. because they get their own funds. They get their own ARPA funds. Right. And Andy, can I say one quick response to that? Yeah. You know, it, it's very possible that maybe the schools are part of the unmet or the assessing the current situation. But when we talk about other sources of funds, we would also note that the schools potentially have other sources of funds um, to a certain extent for some, um, some of their needs. Mm -hmm. I just, I just find unmet needs is complicated um, because they've been unmet for a variety of reasons. Um, some, you know, it's something to do with different financial rules and whatever. Um, and I know that you need the town people, the budget people very much, but you, you, that may be the area where you do want some people who are uh, citizens. I'm not sure. Uh, Bernie? Yeah, I um, in in terms of the uh, in terms of the the town manager and the team, the two things I have, and one else, the current topic is the town manager and the teams. Uh, I really think that the town manager, in doing the assessment, current assessment, should rely on his department heads. He also should build a list of key um, stakeholders in the community to consult with. So to talk to the bid, to talk to the housing authority, to talk to uh, the the um, you know, social service folks in the area, so so you're getting a broader sweep mm -hmm. yeah. of of what's um, what what the needs are, but really relying on the on the on the uh, department heads to uh, uh, to both provide him with information, but also provide him with uh, with other stakeholders uh, to to, uh, to 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 consult with. The other thing that's not in here is something I think that Sean raised the last time we talked which is, um, in, in which I noticed, I think the Commonwealth is doing and dividing and deciding how it's gonna dispense its 5 billion. Um, there should be some notice in here that there's going to be a initial um, set of expenditures that are aimed at um, known revenue shortfalls that we can make up. Uh, expenditures that might be needed to stabilize the town workforce. Um, and to, uh, to, to better meet uh, an ongoing response to the, uh, the COVID situation and uh, where we, need, we might need to, to uh, make some expenditures in terms of uh, technology or infrastructure mm -hmm. that um, 
impacts on service delivery. And these would be things that uh, would come up, I think, fairly short term and be kind of obvious. We, we, we know where, where we've missed. We know where we're running short of money. Uh, we know where we can improve communications. Uh, we also, uh, um, so, so there's that piece. And then this, the, um, the piece under, under unmet needs, I, I really wanna make it clear that there needs to be an assessment of the town's, um, both the town's fiscal and infrastructure needs, including, and I'll, I'll use infrastructure in a broad sense, including equipping, say, the uh, community responder uh, program that's planned. Um, and and, and those, um, those needs are going to, uh, will, will automatically take some level of priority because they will have lasting impacts on the community. Mm -hmm. and make life easier, not just simply this year, but in 23, 24, 25. So that, um, uh, so that we're, we're, we're looking down the road in terms of, of what the town is, um, <clears throat> what the town's facing. Ronnie, can I just ask you, the, uh, the typing in said town's fiscal impact, but would you put town's fiscal impact, including staffing and infrastructure, add those? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's uh, one. So we're just, we're broad on this, yeah. And then the addition um, up, up above um, where uh, get department heads, um, key staff, including department heads before. Oh. Um, somewhere. Work with department heads and key stakeholders. Yep. That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. um, anything else, Kathy? Before no, the only the other words Bernie put in, and it's something I edited in the main document, is unmet need can be revenue shortfall. You know, so you know, or revenue losses, or uh, treasury wording. As long as we um, in the main report, we we're already saying that, so I don't think it has to be said here. Okay. Okay. Sean thinks of a way to put it in, but I'm going to go ahead and see. If Sonia, you have your hand up. Oh, I just wanted to. Um, Bernie said most of it in the beginning of his um, his time. Is it will be? It's not just going to be the finance people and the town manager. It will be all the department heads, with, and they'll reach out to all their um, all their. Uh, the chamber and the bid and social services, housing authority, each department head in charge of a functional area will definitely reach out to the community and then kind of have a brainstorming thing to bring back. I just didn't want anybody to think it's just going to be me, Sean, and Paul sitting here running numbers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Although well, we're good at it. We, we, we assume that. Yeah. Well, that's all we need, right? Is, uh, so, the uh, uh, point's well taken. It will. It, it should be. It should be staff and you know department heads and reaching out to. Mm -hmm. um, Lynn. Yeah, I. I'm glad that um, Bernie added in these things, uh, and I think because I think it's critical. It goes back to that discussion we had last week that if we do stuff for the town, we're benefiting everyone and we're benefiting everyone long-term. So when it gets down to bullet four, three and four, um, particularly four, I think they need, he needs to come back with a prioritized needs and spending plan because that's where the multiple year and the percentage or whatever he's gonna say um, comes in because that is to me, you know, there's people are lining up already to apply for these funds. Mm -hmm. We need to be clear what is going to be allocated for what purposes, both for the town or for beyond the town. Go down a little bit lower on the, uh, just so we can see it for a second on the outline. And well, I'll raise my hand again, sorry. Yeah. 
I just want to make sure that yep. you're looking at the entire thing as we respond. So the uh, evaluating funding allocations mm -hmm. it's under seven but it's, it's sort of implicit in the action plan that we are going to start with the town looking at its own revenue needs yeah andy seven is referring to if um if in this action plan it's determined that there's going to be a certain amount like we talked about last time that's specifically opened up for public proposals that's what seven would be if there was a you know an allocation of a certain amount for public proposals for for that uh for ideas okay uh bob yeah i just wanted to uh you know uh, uh, agree with uh the the prioritizing needs and spending plans the action plan you know a typical action plan will include here are the programs we're going to propose and here's how much money we're going to put into each program so that's that's part of the action plan itself and again that can be amended over time but you, you know you would you would say okay we've got all these needs you know we've got you know 75 million dollars worth of needs we only have 12 million dollars worth of funding so here's what we're going to do um, andy can i ask a follow-up question to uh, Bob, just because he's one of our experts on the action plan. Um, so one of the things I've talked about with the town manager is that, you know, these funds, you know, part of it is for responding to the um, emergency, um, but part of it is around economic recovery as well. Does that change at all how you think about it in terms of the steps, or would you just apply sort of the same rubric, um, whether it's an economic recovery type expenditure versus sort of a, a mitigation type expenditure? Yeah, it, it, yes, I would have. I would just follow the the general outline of the action plan, but obviously, you know, what the what CDBGDR funding really is for is for hurricanes and tornadoes and things like that where there's a lot of physical damage. Right. Uh, and it's not so much for, you know, health needs or, you know, uh, you can you can do economic, well, you, you can do economic development. Uh, there is a whole section of economic development, um, but uh, you wouldn't typically look at health impacts in a CDBGDR program, but that doesn't mean you can't do that in this action plan. And you can't sort of follow the, the same general idea of, you know, identify the, the impact, you know, what else, what, are, what sources of funds are there? And, you know, the state funds may be there for that. Right. And then, you know, what are we going to do about it? Are we going to address that or not? So, so yeah, I don't think it's, I mean, again, I, you don't want to literally take the wording from the, 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 the toolkits because that's really focused on the disaster recovery for hurricanes and tornadoes and things. But following the general idea of it, um, I think you could construct similar types of, of, of documentation or you know, scoring sheets or things like that, however you want to use in order to come up with, with um, you know, the, the spending plan. Really. No, that's good. That, that's how I was looking to confirm was that we, you know, we probably have to make some slight modification, like follow the process, but some modifications to make sure it makes sense for what we're doing. Um, with yeah, this, and, with and, and, and it goes through much more than you probably want to go through. <laughs> you know, you, you don't have to, as, as I said last week, you know, you don't, you don't have to document impacts um, using some methodology that, you know, that can't be challenged. You just need something that's, you know, a reasonable approach and a reasonable estimate of what the impact is. And it can be based on expert opinion. It can be based on what people observe. You could base it on, you know, you know, for example, you could, you know, look at the survival center and how many people came in for meals. You know, that would tell you something about the economic impact. Mm -hmm. yeah, just mm -hmm. things like that is what you you want to use. You don't have to go out and do research and you know uh, you know there may be studies out there that you can that you can uh, re rely on and I think the 
think the interim rule had some references to studies of, of potential impacts of, of COVID. So you might be able to take some of that stuff as well. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so uh, to follow up on that one, we're calling, um, getting... You just muted yourself, Andy. Andy, you hit mute. <laughs> I didn't even intend to do that. Uh, it was a nefarious computer. Uh, but the, anyway, looking at um, the fourth bullet under number four, which is right on the screen, determine capacity, uh, the, there was fairly clear understanding, I thought, in the last discussion that when once you've identified the needs, that you first look to see what capacity exists within the uh, community and town and state already from other sources before you get then to identifying the unmet needs. Um, and I didn't know that the um, third bullet of the under number four was quite explicit enough to capture that thought, which is kind of what Bob was just talking about. Well, that's, that would be a different issue on determining you'd need to say, you know, identify alternative resources and possible partners with additional, you know, that that's a different concept. You're right, Andy, I think, than what bullet three now says. Yeah. So should that um, be an additional named step then? It, with, with, uh, can I ask you on that, Sean, would it be, if the state were going to make part of its distribution, fixing our bridges and fixing our roads, we could take that off our list. If yeah. So I, come on, right? So, so I view that again, unmet needs and, and Bernie, or not Bernie, um, Bob can correct us if we're interpreting this wrong. I, I view unmet needs as needs that don't have another funding source somewhere at the state level. Yeah. Um, so if they're like, again, rental assistance is one we can look into. We know there's funding at the state level, whether or not there's a difference between the amount of funding at the state level and what the need is in town is something we'd have to look at. Um, but let's just say, for example, that there's plenty of state funding for rental assistance and that might not go on the list. We might talk about it to say, you know, we identified it, but there's a source of funds for that. Um, but that wouldn't be on the unmet needs list. Yeah, that's correct. Yes, you, you, it's mm -hmm. sort of, I think you want to kind of like, you kind of want to merge those two bullets there because it's really, you, 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 you know, you, you identify the impacts and related needs, but then the unmet need is something that is not met by some other source of funding. It right. could be state funding, it could be maybe the bid has access to grant money or something. I mean, you know, in, there could be other sources of funding that are out there that can be used to address the impact. Okay. And I almost view determined capacity as almost like non-financial. Like it, if money was not an issue, do we have the sort of the structure, the um, the staffing or whatever it may be to, to um, address that unmet need? I don't, I, maybe that's the one that's confusing people is what is, how does determined capacity differ from other mm -hmm. sources of funds? Yeah, it would be helpful if you defined in the statement, if you define there's capacity, there's fiscal capacity, financial capacity, availability of money, um, and whether it's something the town will undertake or existing, existing programs or programs that the state's going to pass out of its $5 billion share, and capacity, which I think we may actually be able to spend some money on, where we need to bring someone in to help or develop a, 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 uh, the ability to meet some needs. Yeah, I mean, like a good example that we've talked about is um, like mental health. Um, you know, the town itself does not necessarily have the, the capacity to do mental health services, yeah. but we could fund um, some initiative that would bring in that capacity uh, mm -hmm. to meet that need. Right. Maybe you just need to change the word will to might. This one right here? Yep. Yep. Okay, so 
Kathy, do you have anything else? I'm going back to the list. No, now. no, I, I, well, what I was going to say as we're doing this is this interacts with my comments on both what we did last week, but what we're reporting out because we're doing a, um, to make this clear, the, there's this first step, prioritize needs and spending plans. So I, I was going to thank you, Lynn, for adding that because then this, um, this assembler group by the time we get to January 1st, we will have decided whether there is an allocation for a broader community or not. So I just want to make it clear in the report we write that this step seven is contingent on if the first set of money that we get released is six million, do we say, you know, 5 million is town and 1 million is something else or, but we will have made that decision. Um, so it, we need to say that in the report, Andy, is all I mean, because someone looking at this would think now we've got a community group distributing funds, but we are, it says, if community, if called for in the action plan is kind of code words for maybe not, right? So I just think this is fine but I would want to write the report to make it really clear what our recommendations are. It, I don't know whether I was clear just then, but you know, if we decided the first tranche, all of it needs to go to the town, there isn't an outside gr a group form to distribute the money. If we're doing 50, 50, 75, 80, 20, um, that step in seven is um, contingent on decisions that are made up until that point. Okay. You know, so I, this is fine. I just think the report needs to explain what that means. That's, you know, I wasn't suggesting rewording this. Um, okay. You'd have to be really, ha be an insider to know what the words in seven meant otherwise. <laughs> okay, um, Dorothy? Uh, I'm really interested in the time frame, which seems to me to be kind of drawn out. Um, again, it's not that clear to me when the first bit of money comes, but I thought it was coming soon. Um, and not even getting the plan until the middle of October. Um, I guess I thought some of this money was like emergency money um, to help us where we had needs. Um, so it's kind of like stately progress is what I'm seeing here. And as, as Kathy was just talking, by the time you get to advisory group, we're in January of 22. Um, so I guess uh, I'm of the mind to spend money quicker um, because then if there's more money around, we can say we need it. Um, if we spend it really slow and more money comes around, we say, well, you haven't even spent, you haven't even figured out what to do with what we offered you before. So I'm just um, asking, um, can the time frame be tightened, moved up a little bit? Andy, can I respond to that one? Real quick? Yeah. First off, never been called stately, but I don't, I'm not sure if it's a, a bad thing or a good thing. But um, so actually, after we reviewed this plan, we have there was one other agenda item, I believe, which is um, we were going to review with you the things that we want to spend the money on right away. Um, there, there's a um, a little over a million dollars worth of things that um, are sort of time sensitive were called for in the FY22 budget. Um, and I'm sorry, they didn't make it to the packet. So that's probably why, one of the reasons why you're asking that question. Um, and so after this, we want to review those things with you because those are things that, again, if we wait till this is done, um, we'll sort of hinder, you know, we'll kind of defeat the purpose of why we want to do them. Um, and then the rest of the, the other, and then the reason for the rest of it is because we think this creation of an action plan is going to be sort of time consuming um, if we want to do it right and um, really work with everybody and think about all the different um, uh, different needs out there and how we may fund them and really prioritize them against each other. We think that this piece could take, um, you know, it's already July. So if it took a month, um, a month and a half or into September already. Um, so, you know, we might be able to shorten it up a little bit, but I don't think we could shorten it up a ton if we want to put in you know, the right amount of time into developing this plan. Bernie? Yeah, just a couple of things. I, I, uh, I think I mentioned the last time that uh, we, we want to see what our, uh, our, our, our colleagues on the state level are doing. 
so we don't end up um, duplicating their efforts. We want to make sure that we we might want to supplement their efforts, but not supplant them. Um, I think at some point, probably in the report, there has to be a mention that there there are rules around how this money gets spent, and the <laughs> there is the interim final rule. Um, so that will at some point need to be uh, summarized, explained, or referenced, uh, so people understand what uh, what uh, the the manager and, and his, his staff are up against when they start to build a spending plan. And again, emphasize that uh, I think the, the two things we're looking at is one is recovery, uh, the more immediate impacts, and two is, is to use that horrible buzzword, sustainable, sustainability, you know, ensuring the town and, and, and the community are, are be able to, to, to grow from this going forward, looking at 2024, 20, 25, 26. Um, Uh, Bob? Yeah, I just wanted to point out that um, some of the time that uh, people such as Sean and Sonia and, and Paul and the department had spend on the planning should be a reimbursable expense. Um, so uh, you, you should be able to, to um, say that, you know, Sean, you spent 10% of your time on this or something during the month of August, you know, July and August or something. Um, and I, I, as, as I recall, the, the documentation is not onerous for that, but just, just so we do know that that is a, it is an eligible expense as far as I can tell, uh, reading, the, reading the thing, it might be something to clarify. Um, and the other thing about um, you know, capacity, you know, we talked about, well, we might have to, you know, hire mental health professionals or something. But um, the other thing is, it's conceivable that there could be a state program where we needed to dedicate some time for somebody in the, in the government to help implement that program locally. So we don't want to forget about that aspect of, of things. So um, again, we won't, we won't know that until the state really defines what they're doing. But, um, you know, we don't want to not be able to take advantage of state money because we don't have, you know, we don't have somewhere in this budget or somewhere in, in the town budget time for somebody to actually work with the state to implement that program. And, you, and Bob, you're right. Um, administrative costs are allowable um, in this grant. so we'll be keeping track of what we'll um what we spend on it yeah i should probably make that clear somewhere in the written report just so that it doesn't get lost and people that and they say why are you doing that um since no one has hands up now i was wondering sean did you have a list of immediately identified town expenses or ones that you anticipate yeah. Um, hold on, I'll bring that up in one second. I just want to put out one more thing that I was, I don't know if we need to change this, but I just want to get feedback on. Um, so when the town manager presents the initial um, action plan to the council, we were thinking this would also be a time where we might do like a listening session or, or something for the community so that we get direct community input on the action plan as well. Um, just so we get it, you know, the council will obviously weigh in, but this will also, if, if there's a big portion of the uh, grant that's sort of allocated in the spending plan, we'd want to get their feedback before it's finalized. Um, and that would be another opportunity for if there's suggestions or ideas to come in, um, but it would be reacting to the, to the action plan. And on number seven, the, the part where you say if called for in the action plan in parentheses at the end, do we anticipate that the plan wouldn't have that in there or might not? Um, I've so we've started gathering ideas and people have submitted things and different department heads have you know started digging into the grant and and reading how um, you know what's allowable and what's not allowable. Um, so I don't know for sure yet. Um, I think it's going to be up to the town manager um, and how he prioritizes uh, the, you know, what he hears from the department heads, what he hears from key stakeholders. Um, I mean, I guess if, if this group feels that there should definitely be a piece um, allocated to that, 
process, that portion of the process, um, then you'd want to include that in the report. Okay. One other question I have is you've gone through this. Um, we've mentioned several times last meeting and this meeting about schools having some funds of their own coming as a part of ARPA. Is there any other segment of the town government that's receiving direct funds, uh, library uh, or emergency services, whatever? Um, I'm sure there will be. I haven't heard of any yet. Sonia, have you seen any other grants that have come in um, outside of the schools? I haven't heard of any specifically yet, but just knowing how much money is out there and the, and the broad range of programs that it can be used for, I wouldn't be surprised if there are other smaller grants that are made um, to departments, whether it be public safety or um, the health department, uh, maybe the library. Well, there's been some talk of, uh, since the legislature is now largely controlling the state funds and not the governor, it will, it'll take longer to see what's going on there. But there's, there's already been a proposal out there that uh, something like $574 million comes off to $5 billion and goes directly to arts organizations. Mm -hmm. So you will have to wait and see what the legislature does with their chunk of change. But I think that's probably adequately covered in the way we've described the action plan. So we don't really need to call it out. Anything else? Um, and then before Sean turns to the next topic, which I think is to um, identifying of immediate needs. This, this is new, right, Sean? Um, I knew to yeah. us. Yeah, it's new to it's new to you. I mean, you've seen it, um, except for this last one, um, revenue replacement for sewer and parking fund. You've seen these things in different forms previously, um, but this is the first time it's sort of all pulled together into a single list. Um, is it okay if I run through these, Andy, quickly? Okay. Um, so these ones here were part of the FY22 budget document. Um, Things that when the FY22 budget was being assembled, we identified, sorry, there's some spelling mistakes in there, um, that we identified as parts of the FY22 budget that we wanted to fund from this grant. Um, there was a 50% uh, of a, a position, diversity, equity, and inclusion coordinator, um, staff transition report. These are a lot of these things, or pretty much all of these things are things we would have been in the general fund budget had we had funds to do so. Um, but because of COVID and our revenues being down, we didn't have those funds. Um, staff transition report because we have a number of key retirements in FY22. Um, a capital projects manager was to help with, um, we have a couple infrastructure projects going on in enterprise funds. And then we also have the four building projects that are starting up. Um, so it was a position to help manage all the um, logistics of those uh, various projects. Um, Cherry Hill extra help. This was actually a cut from the general fund budget in FY21. Um, that we wanted to fund it out of ARPA for FY22 and then restore it into the general fund budget the next year. Um, sustainability intern was a recommendation that we had heard from the ECAC at a previous meeting. And then some additional funding for our community participation officers um, around outreach, whether it be supplies or, um, or software, different things they might be doing for the year. So this first group again was, were all things that were laid out in the FY22 budget. Um, that was presented. And then this next one, the community responder program was discussed and presented at the May 27th meeting when we came back with a revised um, sort of budget for the community responder program. And we talked about using um, some ARPA funds for some of the one-time costs of getting that program established, whether it be vehicles or outfitting space, um, training and consulting, things of that nature. And then the last one, which is the newer one is, um, funding for the sewer enterprise fund and the parking enterprise fund for revenue replacement. Both of those funds um, have revenue deficits coming in much below what um, was budgeted. And so these funds would help make those, um, those programs whole for, the, for FY21. And so again, these are all things that we'd wanna move on relatively quickly because if, you know, we, if we wait till the fall, then we, if we wait till the fall for revenue replacement, it might be too late to use it for FY21 at that point. Um, and then these are other things that we'll have to get started before the fall. Okay, see, uh, Pat and Lynn and Kathy have 
um, raise the hand. So Pat. I have a quick question because Sean mentioned vehicles for the community responder program. Can funding from this, the ARPA funds be used to replace the ladder truck? And is there, because we certainly have unmet needs in the fire department. So it would have to fit under, um, I'd have to look and see if it would fit under any other eligibility criteria. The one that okay. um, we were thinking this would fit under um, for the community responder program was the revenue replacement and lost revenue. Gotcha. Um, but in reading the interim final rule, th there's a couple other criteria that potentially the community responder program could be eligible under um, because there's some, there's some eligibility around mental health programs and things of that nature. Um, the, f the ladder truck, Again, it, if we were going to do that, it'd have to be probably the revenue replacement, or I'd have to see if there's some first responder categories that might um, that it might be eligible for. I'm not sure. Thank you. A couple questions. Um, can any of these funds be used to fund the additional four positions of community responders? Um, potentially, again, under the sort of governmental services. Um, again, the, the way I'm, there's still some guidance to be received on these types of things. Um, we've been working with our auditors to try to understand how they're going to interpret these rules. Um, and so, but the way I'm interpreting them so far is if they're things that if we had the funds to do, we would have done them, then it should be eligible under that revenue replacement category. Um, because we theoretically could have cut something else to fund these positions. And then those other things that we cut would have been eligible um, because you can use uh, ARPA funds to restore reductions in your, in your governmental services. Um, okay. So yes, I guess that's the, the quick answer. Uh, can any of this be used? Um, or excuse me, does parking fund mean, is that also the transportation fund? Yeah, yeah, sorry, I should call it transportation fund. That's okay. what we're thinking for that. Um, and then another question is, can any of this be used um, toward any of the capital, smaller capital projects? Um, I know that we've been trying for other funds to help fund the um, water plant, uh, but I just wondered about any of the other smaller capital projects. You know, Pat already asked about the fire truck. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, we'd have to know what it is and then try to see how it would fit. So like water and sewer infrastructure is an eligible um, use provided it meets certain criteria, um, which Guilford is already starting looking at what that criteria is um, so we can evaluate projects there. Um, and so if there's another capital project, we'd have to see if there's a, we sort of want to use the revenue replacement category as like the last resort. If there's a specific eligibility criteria, other than that, we would want to um, you kind of label that one first. Um, okay. yeah. Can any of this be used to fund additional firefighter positions? Potentially, I, th I think one of the, um, you know, one of the things we, you know, the advisory group was going to do is whatever we find out of this, we want to make sure it's sustainable and things that we can fold into our operating budget before these funds run out. Um, and so, you know, any of the things that are operational that are going to be recurring costs, we really want to sort of do that analysis to make sure that they can be um, absorbed right. into the operating budget within three years or so. Right. So, I mean, I'm, I'm almost thinking like you have a three-year plan and the first year, you know, the funds would be used to fund four then by the second time, the town would have to pick up two, but the funds would be used for two. And, and you know, some kind of graduated plan where the town takes it over. And then is this truly reflective of other staffing needs that we have not been able to fund? No, so this list, again, this list isn't everything that um, you've mentioned. I think those things would have to go through that sort of action plan process we talked about. This is, these are things that we identified, again, as part of the FY22 um, budget process that were priorities, um, or in the case of the revenue replacement, again, a, a true revenue def deficit. Um, this list isn't reflective of sort of all staffing needs that have, yeah. that have occurred in town. Okay. And I just want to clarify, the capital projects manager would only be in relationship to DBW, DPW fire and library? Um, well, we were thinking it could, I mean, depending on what their capacity is and how the projects are timed, we were thinking it could 
you know, help with the four building projects and then other big infrastructure projects. Um, and that position we were thinking would be a temporary position, which is one of the reasons why we proposed it. It could sort of be a two or three year position um, that could go away when the grant funds end. Okay, thank you. Kathy? Um, I'm, I'm probably just building on the what it could be used for. Um, when I look at fire, I'm pretty sure there's been a file fall off in the ambulance fund because the ambulance wasn't making as many runs um, and reimbursable by insurance. Um, and so rather than thinking of you know, funding a position, if you looked at what our uh, flow of money would normally have been, whatever the normal year is, you could do an estimate of how much more because we'd be returning to that level in theory. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's a, you know, you may not have that calculation, but I was thinking on the ambulance fund side, not the whole fire department side, and that might help pay for some overtime, help pay for um, some other kinds of things that they're stressed to do within their current budget. Um, yeah, no, we can, we can look at that. Uh, the, the funny thing about ambulance funds is that they sort of don't have a good history right now with the new system that's in place because they, they changed their, um, we lost the Hadley routes. And so, you know, that sort of impacts the, the revenue history, but then they also changed the fee structure. They increased fees. Um, so we actually don't have a ton of history on what the new normal is for sort of the ambulance fund pre COVID. Um, but I think, in, but I think your point in general is looking at the ambulance fund is a good place to look at it. But, and... but couldn't you, um, I work with numbers all the time to create the number when I need it, you know, not a fictitious number, but if you know, the fee went up, and you know the number of the times the ambulance had a billable amount, you could adjust what the old rate, it's like an inflation adjuster. You could do how much you would have gotten under the old use rate compared to, you know, and you have to do it pre-COVID, but that- Yeah, kind of I mean, we can work with our billing. So we don't, we have a third party billing um, company. So we'd have to ask them to sort of go in, look at a year before, pull out the Hadley claims and then adjust all the other claims to the new billing rates. We can see if that's something um, that they can do for us. Okay, and so it may be what you're saying is it may be part of this action plan analysis that you can't you can't give me another line right now in this because it requires. Yeah, and, yeah, and again, I guess I mean if some of the things that have been talked about are staffing issues that we've heard of, but this list of things that we're viewing, we have to do it. We want to fund them sort of now or in the next month or so because they were part of the actual budget proposal for FY22, or they're time sensitive, like the revenue replacement. Um, for sewer and parking, where we would have to do that before we close out the year. Um, otherwise, it would be, I'm not sure what the mechanics would be after that point if we'd be able to do it. Okay, so then just staying with this list then, um, which is a, a clear list. If we all agree, great, all of these make sense. Then in the report rewrite, um, I've never been sure whether the two tranches that are being released, are they equal? Like 50% comes to us. So we're doing- It's supposed like, to be, yeah. It's supposed so, to be a fifty percent, and then another fifty percent. Yeah. So the six million minus the one point four, we're 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 working with the three and three point six or whatever. But so in our report, we should say, I think, Andy, that there already is an immediate need to spend this amount of money, and we recommend doing that. And then the action plan would be looking at the, you know, just make it very clear to address Dorothy's concern that, well, you know, the money's coming and we're not doing anything with it. So then we've got the other amount that the action plan on first thing. And then action plan, we also talked about in the wording of the report that whatever the action plan is for tranche one, it doesn't have to be exactly the same for the second period. So that we're making uh, an initial phase and a second phase. But I think we should, I think this is really good to say that we're not sitting around waiting and to specifically recommend approval of this. If we have to do it as a council or we just, um, we do it, but we do it in a report, we make it clear, right? So uh, I'm done. <laughs> Okay, Bernie. You know, to, to continue with the, the uh, piling on here, technology would be part of this as well, I think. So where we can uh, improve our data management or improve our communications. Um, it's usually, I, I don't recall if the fire department, police department, 
um, are looking for new radios, or they always seem to be, but that's another thing that can go in here. And I, I'm really sort of expect this is pretty much what I was talking about earlier. And I'm really expecting another another round of this, where we can drill down and do what uh, Kathy suggested about you know looking at the ambulance fees and uh, looking at some other equipment that can be replaced, looking at uh, other, certain other water and sewer projects that might fit under this whole thing. So uh, uh, this is I think this is a good start in. Um, there certainly should be more to come uh, where we can begin to patch some of these uh, patch some of these holes and then take care of some uh, some spending that will benefit us for the long term. So let me pause and uh, I, I take time to ask Sean a question. Um, we have uh, during this past year the fire department uh, brought on some of the uh, call force uh, students and regular call force to assist the fire department staffing um, during this period. And we're using some temporary funds for that. Do we need any temporary funds to continue that or can we even continue it? Um, potentially. So we're, we're thinking about continuing it in the fall with CARES money still. Um, and then doing a sort of an evaluation in the fall once we see what it look, the town looks like when all the students come back um, to see if it, you know, how long it would need to continue. Um, but again, I think to, to Lynn's earlier point, additional firefighters, uh, depending on how we classify it, could probably, could, not probably, could be a use of ARPA funds um, if the town prioritizes it that way. Is there a way to put a placeholder in the list with another, with uh, without an amount of money, just so that it's obvious? Yeah, I mean, I think that's we. I guess the question is, is that supposed to be part of the action plan that's developed over the summer? Um, okay. yeah, th these were these are all on here for a specific reason because they've all been either presented previously or there's um, in this particular case there's a time sensitive um, time sensitivity around it. Um, with that, with the CARES funds not expiring until the end of the year, we theoretically have time um, for that the action plan to happen first. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dorothy? Uh, I just wanted to suggest that one keep an imagination <clears throat> that what is promised doesn't come, that things change, and that you have to do the most important first because the whole thing can be yanked. I'm thinking about this program. I, I may have some of the facts wrong, but a federal program to help businesses, restaurants, and it was supposed to help uh, minority and maybe women owned businesses first. And then the ruling changed and people who were told they had the grant were told, nope, you're not getting anything. So um, I don't know if all of this process of giving money out is gonna be smooth and rational. So just want to say, think about what has to be done and make sure you do that first. Lynn? Yeah, I wanna go back to Kathy's um, statement about making these a priority and wonder if we need a motion from us for the town council or, or do we just see this as advisory to the manager? I think our view is that again, it's sort of advisory to the manager. Um, because it's an allocation from the ARPA grant. So um, so I think, you know, either a vote or sentiment and then that being reflected in the report it would be good. I'm willing to make that motion that we, um, we endorse the proposal to use these funds um, immediately um, for the following. So we endorse it, even if we don't have to endorse it. <laughs> I don't know if they're wording it a perfect way since we seem not to have to propose that it be used. Um, we're being asked to endorse it. Or encourage. Or encourage. You know, I think it's important because, because I do the math and right away we're down to 4.6, you know, once we do this. I think it's an important piece to include in our report and, and, and to affirm that we discussed it and we confirm it, we affirm it, affirm, right? Not confirm, affirm. <laughs> so someone can word my motion for me, but you've got what I'm trying to do. I move that we 
affirm the proposal to spend uh, one point da, 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 on the items listed below that the town manager and staff have identified as immediate needs. Um, I'll, I will second, but I'm waiting for Sonia because she may. I wouldn't put a dollar amount in here. A lot of these are estimates. So you put a dollar amount in there, then it seems like an appropriation. Okay, so give me the give me the wording to to affirm the list that was presented to us. That would work. Uh, okay. And I second that. Okay. Um, just make sure that Scott uh, has the uh, wording satisfactorily. Do you feel comfortable with the wording, Scott? Uh, yes, I do. I'm I'm good over here. And I'll send a list out to everybody and post it to the packet after the meeting so that you have, everyone has the list. Okay, so there's a motion that's been made by Kathy and seconded by Lynn. Any further discussion on the motion? Because if not, let's just vote on it. Um, Pat? Aye. Um, Bernie, uh, support? Unmute. I support it, yes. Ellen? Aye. Uh, Dorothy? Yes. Bob? I support it. Kathy? Yes. And I'll vote yes. So it is uh, five to zero and two members, resident members of the committee who are present support the motion. Um, so, um, Anything else we want to talk about about the uh, the outline because then we should return briefly to the report uh, and see if we can and I, maybe I should pause um, just to say that we do have public comment and I, I know there are two attendees. If either attendee would like to offer any comment, uh, please raise your hand so that we know. And if I don't see any hands raised. Um, I'll know that we uh, asked the question and there was no comment offered. And Andy, I'm just gonna um, sign off because um, I have to head out it, um, but I've made Lynn the co-host, so sh you should be all set. Okay, great. And it doesn't appear that there's any request for public comment. So um, the, the one thing that's left is that uh, Kathy had uh, done a marked up version of the uh, report itself and um, rather than parse out every word I think it'd be worth just talking about what you feel to be the key concepts that you want to do in the field it would be better to share screen um, then you should just do a share screen and put it on the on, up on the screen so that you can point to sections as you uh, talk about it but uh, just let people know what you were thinking. Okay. Um, let me see whether I can do this. Uh, I, of course, have way too many things open. I think this is it. Can people see that? Yes. Oh. Uh, you may need to, if you can enlarge the. Uh... Okay. Well, I'm going to. Make it larger, but first I have to move all your faces away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, I made I made just a couple, some are purely additions. Um, the first is if we know it, and Sean will know it, that uh, we say that schools are gonna get direct recipient, be direct recipients. I think it would be helpful if we anticipate, we know what that amount is so that people just know it. That's just a blank that we either know. And I wanted to put in some of the information we had that when we were looking at Sean's original memo that was, I thought, missing from here that you can replace lost revenue for vital services. And then I copied and pasted this list from Treasury. So I thought in our uh, report back, it would be useful to have this information in. And, and that is not my wording, those bullets. That's just right from the Treasury Advisory. And I did a link to it. They also um, say that provide substantial flexibility for each government to meet local needs. And so I just dropped that all in. 
So that's one main thing. And then um, the second was in the next paragraphs uh, saying, and I realize Sean keeps telling us that we can't do all enterprise funds, but this includes replacing revenue loss for enterprise funds. So, um, and meeting town's priority capital needs that support public services. So we, we talked about this sentence that funding stat, funding the town accrues to everybody in town. Um, so making that point that one of the reasons the town is in the mix is everybody gets it when the town, and I might not have worded it well, but Sonia was quite eloquent last time in the meeting on that and Lynn did it. And then, then I have a, but we don't have to use it all for this purpose. And that first we would determine the share and then the share for the broader community. So those are my major changes um, and what I dropped in. Otherwise, I just do, I'm a fan of headers. So the need for an action plan, I made a header. The community composition, I made a header. And um, the one thing I didn't see in this report, Andy, is last time several people, um, several finance committee members said they would recommend that the committee not have counselors on it. And that sentence was missing. So I don't know whether there was consensus on that, that but that was, it was just purely for the record. So those are what I did. Otherwise, um, I didn't do anything. <laughs> you know, I, I, liked, I liked the framework, but so the big thing was to drop in what it can be used for very specifically. And then um, to do this two-step that we'd make this division and then we'd set up the committee to talk about the community side. That's it. Um, the one thing that I was just going to comment on of this, all the things and then I'll turn to other people is that um, the question that we had talked about a little bit last time about the wisdom of having counselors on it when, with the election coming, uh, sitting on the advisory committee, the way that we put the timing together at the end, the advisory committee wouldn't be formed until after the election. And so we're talking about then uh, people who are not facing election and uh, also could be people who are not even currently on the council who might be, um, but who are elected and will be sworn in in, in January. So I'm not, I think that we may need to revisit that question because the premise changed with the timeline clarification. I, that'd be fine. You know, Andy, and I wasn't looking at the timeline when I did this. So I have no problem taking that out, but Lynn and Pat had both endorsed this. So if they're fine with not having that sentence in, I'm fine with it. You know, if we're, if you know, so Pat, I think you were the original person that said you didn't think a counselor should be on this advisory group. So anyway, I'm and certainly uh, ele election cycle doesn't need to be there anymore because you're right. Yeah, I'll stop. Okay, um, then let me go back to the list. Uh, Sonia, did you have something? Yeah, I just wanted to comment on cutting and pasting from the state sites a list or anything like that. I'd caution doing that specifically because things have been changing all the time from these lists and everything. If you want to put a, a link to it, I would do that. But when you memorialize it in a report and things change down the road, then we're, we're trying to defend something that was put in a report and trying to find all the information going forward to show what changed. So I, I would caution putting in cutting and pasting from any state website. Okay. Into this, was, this, this was the, the US Department of Treasury yeah. explaining what, so even you think even, cause it was treasury statement that there's this amount of money. Right, and then the um, state and the department, um, division of local services will take that and they'll interpret it the way they interpret it. So, I mean, you can do it, but I'm just cautioning okay. Okay. <laughs> that approach. I put the link there or tell people where they can go to find the information. Yeah, we might be able to finesse the wording on that too, but I think the point is that right. we- you know, It doesn't, we have, a, it doesn't have to be a direct list. It can be, we, and Sean in Sean's original memo had just paraphrased each thing um, to be, okay. 
I did a copy and paste. Uh, Lynn? Your root mute. Thank you. Going back to the, the point Andy made, uh, if it's not elect, if it's if it's after the election, then I don't feel we need to make that statement about counselors. Uh, and then up above, um, and I was one of the people that totally agreed with Pat on that. Up above, uh, one of the ways to handle the issue of enterprise funds is to just say rev revenue loss from qualified enterprise funds. Those are, other than that, and anything else I say would be Scribner comments. Okay, thank you. Um, Bob? Yeah, I, just a couple of points. One is, um, if you did want to copy and paste, uh, you could copy and paste from the actual statute, because um, that is done, um, that's passed. Uh, and that won't change, um, but I think linking is fine. I did want to just go and, and revise one sentence uh, in the, the, the Bob Hegner paragraph. <laughs> um, if you could put that up, um, I think it's below there. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, I, actually, I would, I would go back to the header there and I would just call it need for the action plan or need for an action plan um, to distribute funds or something like that. I don't think we need to worry about the advisory committee at that point. Um, and, and then in the Bob Hegner paragraph, the, the sentence that's on the fourth line, they advise recipients to develop an action plan. Actually, recipients are required to develop an action plan. Um, okay. yeah, I, would, I, I, would, I would just say re recipients are required because the they re sort of refers back to the toolkit, which isn't really, uh, you know, the, the- Got it. Yeah, that's a, that's a requirement from HUD. Um, and I don't know if we want to say this or not, and I don't think, I'm not sure I could come up with a good way of saying it, but it's what I said uh, in response to the question from Sean earlier that, you know, this, this um, toolkit is not designed expressively, you know, specifically for a pandemic response. Uh, but it's useful, it's helpful uh, as, a, as, a, as a, an example of how to develop a, an action plan. And maybe we don't need to say that. Um, but, you know, I don't want people to feel that we have to follow the CDBG DR guidelines directly. That's all. Okay. And I think, the, you know, I think the way it's, it's so, worded is which, fine. Could as be long as someone doesn't, um, yeah. Which as long as someone doesn't say, "Oh, do we really have to follow this CDBG?" Because it goes into housing and sure. you know, it goes into things that we're not going to go into. <laughs> so that's it. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Lynn. I forgot to take my hand down. Okay. So, um, is it okay if uh, Sean and I were with Kathy to uh, get a final written report done that um, addresses these needs? We'll try and circulate it. We have a little bit of time before the 12th. So if we get it out quickly enough, we might be able to at least let you see a draft of it before it goes out, even though I'm not suggesting by any means that we have any further meetings. But uh, that works for me. That's good. fine. Okay. Works for me too. Okay. So, is there anything else that people want to bring up in this uh, discussion before we um, call it a wrap for the day? 
So seeing none, I think that we've actually done a monumental amount of work in record time, <laughs> considering uh, how, when, the, when the council referred it to us and the timeline they gave us to respond to it. So uh, it was really a team effort and I appreciate uh, the participation of the entire team, it's a great group. Um, I will work with Sean and Kathy trying to see if we can get the last, the, the final documents in order, consistent with the motion that was passed and the plan as we've discussed. And uh, if we can, we will get the drafts out to you before they have to go to the council, just so that there's one last chance for people to comment. But um, unless I hear a request, otherwise we will not plan on meeting again on the subject. Kathy? I just have one question of Sonia as we turn to the draft. You said, Sonia, don't use the numbers, you know, that add up to the one point whatever. Can we use the list of items? Yeah, I wouldn't use the numbers because like most of those numbers that Sean put in there are estimates of what we're going to need. Right, I'm just saying that we've got a motion to, to affirm this list. And so we're going to have to put a list in. So we'll put a list in without numbers, correct? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Anything else? Looking for waving hands or anything else. Okay. So uh, with that point, at, uh, uh, what do we at? 10 after 3, we'll call it. Um, we'll declare that the uh, meeting is adjourned. And I thank all of you. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, right. Andy. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank all of you. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.